Hello everybody, Raspberry Barrel here, and today we'll be reading another biography of Muni, as usual. But uh, today we'll be reading some biographies that have been requested by quite a few people, and forgive me if I mispronounce this, but we are now starting to read biographies by Infomixy. And we'll be reading her first biography, Artemisa the Adventurer. Before we begin, thank you, Infamixy, for for letting us read your biographies. I'm very excited. And please forgive me everyone if I stutter, hesitate, or mispronounce anything, or misread. And forgive me for any noises in the background. I also want to add a little note before we begin. As the author says, her AU is a mix of her universe and the universe of Jigzero 109s. So this queen is Hermera's daughter and Cosmica's mother. Okay, and let's begin. Artemisa the Adventurer. This queen was an adventurer, as adventurous as could be. She explored the tallest mountains to the deepest seas. Artemisa Butterfly, the Adventurer. Born A94, died A31. Was queen A12 through 31. Married to Altridge Malay. Children, Cosmica Butterfly, Esteline Butterfly. Artemisa was the daughter of Hermera Butterfly the Builder. She was born on a warm night when the moon was full and shining in A94. She had light brown hair and green shining eyes, inherited from her father, with a pair of light maroon compass points on her cheeks. Her mother named her Artemisa, which meant moon in Low Munion. Artemisa always had an adventurous spirit. When she was little, she would love to explore the castle and run around. Sometimes, she would even climb to the top of the towers, to which the guards had to bring her down. Besides her adventurous personality, she was also very sweet. She could barely hate anything, and she tried to bring out the good in everyone. When Artemisa was four, she earned a younger sister named Apollia. She had black hair and green eyes and inverted blue triangles on her cheeks. Artemisa was excited to have a little sister. She even tried to see her mother give birth to her, but her father did not approve. Artemisa always had dreams of exploring the lands of Muni. She asked her parents if she could, but of course they said, maybe when you're older. Artemisa also had a good relationship with her grandmother, Estelaria. She had many memories of her grandmother, and Estelaria would often times give Artemisa bedtime stories. Hermer would try to get Artemisa to come to the council meetings with her, but she would always complain that it was too boring. The few times Hermer actually got Artemisa to go, she would just go wander and read the notes of the ancient explorers she found. Hermer didn't mind though, she knew Artemisa would be a great ruler one way or another. In A8, Estelaria passed away due to natural causes. It was hard at first, but Artemisa was able to move on. When Artemisa turned 14, she inherited the wand. The crystal was a light blue heart. It had green wings and a dark blue handle with a smooth oval light blue crystal at the bottom. The middle had a brown three-pointed star and at the top there was a curved brown crown. Artemisa was so excited she stayed up the whole night practicing basic spells. Now that she had the wand, Artemisa wanted to begin to explore outside the land of the Butterfly Kingdom. She begged her parents for days until they finally agreed to let her go and explore once she advanced in her spell training. Two months later, Hermera and Rowan set an expedition with Artemisa as leader of it. They also had Ultridge Malay of House Malay sent on the mission to help Artemisa. They left at dawn with more than 20 men and supplies to last them four months. Artemisa said goodbye to her parents and set course. They would go across the shore of the Muni River and see what they would do from there. After the first four hours, Artemisa got bored and decided to try and talk to Ultridge. But every time she talked to him, he just gave a mad glance at her. When Artemisa finally asked if he was feeling okay, he just grumbled. You dragged me on a stupid adventure that I didn't want to go on, and now you're trying to talk to me? This is the worst day of my life. Artemisa got the idea of what was going on, so she decided to let him be. She knew he would come around. When they finally got through three-fourths of the river, they decided to take a rest. 
as it was getting late. The next morning, they started to get ready to continue. As Artemisa was packing back up her sleeping bag, made out of leather and hay, she noticed that Ultridge was being swarmed by a bunch of bees with a bunch of bug bites. Artemisa blasted a spell at the bees to make them go away and walked over to help Ultridge. But instead of him thanking her, he just yelled at her to go away. So she did. She felt bad for Ultridge. They walked for four hours when they decided to set camp. Ultridge had accidentally dropped his supplies in the lake where they were camping. All the other explorers didn't want to share their tents, but Artemisa, being the kind-hearted person she was, offered him to sleep in her tent with her. Despite being stubborn, Ultridge said yes. The two were quiet at first. Ultridge just read a book and Artemisa ate her corn chowder. But every minute or so, they would glance at each other. After a while, Artemisa finally started a conversation. It wasn't very good at first, but then they started to realize they had a lot in common. They got to know each other very well, and at the end of the conversation, Ultrid apologized about his attitude. Artemisa forgave him. After that night, the two considered each other friends. The next morning, they walked for about seven miles. When they finally reached the village, they explored and met the people. Artemisa told everyone that she was the heir of the throne and was on an adventure expedition. Artemisa wrote in her journal, the people that inhabit the kingdom are nice, yet crazy and Viking barbarian-like. They are very skilled and strong fighters, too. Artemisa and the explorers then visited the castle, where they met King Skog Johansson. He told them the kingdom they were in was the Johansson kingdom. Artemisa and the king chatted for a while, and he invited them over for dinner. They had a feast with meat, pig goat, and various corn meals. It was good. It was a good time. They also stayed overnight to sleep. The next day, they decided to head back to the Butterfly Kingdom. They said farewell to the king and headed off. When they got back, Artemis and Ultridge told the queen and king of their findings. Hermra and Rowan were not expecting what she found and were extremely proud of her. After this, Artemis had decided to study about the land of Muni, the forest, the mountains, etc., so she would have a better idea of where she was going. Every week, she would have a class with a strelmine firefly and bush forth to study the land. After three months of studying, Artemisa was ready. She started adventuring Muni. In her first few adventures, she found an ancient monster temple. She found many monster artifacts, books in high Munian, statues, constitution papers, and treasure. She also found a statue of an ancient monster ruler. Under the statue was a stone with the monster's name on it. She couldn't read it, though, because it was an ancient monster language. She took as much stuff as she could with the Levitato spell. When she was going to another adventure, she decided to invite Ultridge. He came with pleasure, and the two explored for a while. They discovered a forest and decided to explore it. Artemisa got several spider bites, and the same happened to Ultridge. After a while, the two expected more spider bites, but they didn't get any more. Artemis and Ultridge went back and jokingly named the forest the Forest of Probable Spider Bites. A week after many adventures, Artemis and Ultridge decided to go back to the forest. They walked all the way through the forest to another side and where they found a giant kingdom. They climbed to the top of the castle and found that the kingdom was inhabited by puppies. Artemis and Ultridge decided to have some fun and threw dog treats all over the kingdom. A month later, Artemis and Ultridge decided to go east of the Johansson kingdom. To save time, they flew on Ultridge's falcon. After one hour of flying, they finally saw a village built on a bunch of trees. They flew down to explore the village and found it was populated by apes. They were very advanced and had their own economy, king and queen, etc. The kingdom's name was the Ape Kingdom. Hermer started to get worried about Artemis's wand training and feared she hadn't been practicing much, so she let out Baby to evaluate her. Artemisa was worried about the evaluation, as she knew she hadn't been practicing much and she feared she would fail. To Artemis's surprise, the evaluation went well, until the apple test. Artemisa accidentally exploded the apple, then on her second try melted it, then on her third try opened a portal that transferred it to the void of space. After the evaluation, Baby said to Hermera, She has very good spells and sorcery, but sadly doesn't practice much. If she continues to do this, her potential will be lost. 
Hearing this upset Hermra and caused her to try and talk to Artemis, Artemisa. She told Artemisa that she would not be able to go on any more adventures until her magic training improved. This made Artemis mad and the two had a fight that ended with Artemisa being sent to her room. Artemisa told Ultridge about what happened and how they couldn't go on adventures for a while. He was fine with it. He told her he would still visit her. Artemisa practiced her spells more than often for the next three months. Ultridge would visit her every now and then and told her about his studies on finance and ba banking. The whole time Artemisa was training, she couldn't help but think about Ultridge. And she couldn't help but miss going on adventures with him. After two weeks, she knew what was going on. She was in love with Ultridge. She decided to call him on her mirror to confess. He answered and Artemisa told him she had some news. Then she noted Ultridge was extremely happy and excited and he said that he coincidentally also had news. Artemisa told him to go first. He told her he had just got into a relationship with Frisia Flowers, a very beautiful and attractive girl. After this, Artemisa told Ultridge her news wasn't very important and ended the call. The reason she didn't tell Ultridge was because she didn't want to ruin his new relationship with Frisia. She felt happy for him, but couldn't help but sob all night long. After this, Artemisa couldn't focus on her wand training because she was too stressed about her feelings towards Ultridge. When she and Ultridge spent time together, he would always have to leave early to do something with Frisia, which saddened and angered Artemisa. Some nights, Artemisa couldn't take it and just cried herself to sleep. After a while, Artemisa started to notice that Ultridge started to be very flirtatious with her. Artemisa was confused, but she just went on with it. Over time, the two started to do more flirty things, such as holding hands, blushing when they complimented each other, and more. One night, when Ultridge, Frisia, and Artemisa were together watching a play, after the play, Ultridge and Artemisia kissed. After the kiss, Artemisia was confused, but then finally confessed her feelings to Ultridge. Ultridge surprisingly kissed her again. Frisia was extremely angered by this and broke up with Ultridge, but he didn't care because he now loved Artemisa. That night, Artemisa and Ultridge went from platonic to romantic and took their relationship to the next level. The next month, Harmra allowed Artemisa to adventure again. In the next year, she discovered the Cetus Kingdom, the Helen Kingdom, the Sylvian Kingdom, the Clifford Kingdom, the Moyes Kingdom, the Slug Kingdom, the Maya Kingdom, the Rosen Kingdom, the Frostel Kingdom, Boalgator Canyon, etc. In the year A12, Artemisa and Ulcerich married. The wedding was huge. Artemisa invited the noble neighborhood kingdoms to, to come, including Skog. The next week, Artemisa's coronation took place. Her crown was gold, with dark forest green lining at the top. Artemisa's reign was calm at the beginning. She didn't have much to do, so she still had time to go on adventures. In one adventure, she discovered the forest of absolute doom and the Jaggy Mountains. In her adventure, after that, she had explored some of the mountains, such as the Jaggy Mountains. She even discovered the Musty Mountain Caves. On the second adventure of her reign, she discovered Garbage Beach. It, it was a beach full of garbage and junk, and according to Artemisa herself, she said the beach smelled so bad that she had to cast a bubble around her head. After she had come back from her second adventure, her mother and aunt, Nixie, were in a very big fight. In the same night, Hermer and Nixie had a huge argument in the royal living room. Artemisa heard the fight from her room. They were yelling historically. Artemisa approached her father about it, and he said that he knew they didn't get along the best, but he didn't know what had gotten into them. After a while, Rowan went downstairs and the two had already made up, and the three of them decided to share a bottle of wine. The next morning, Artemisa found her aunt and her parents dead in their rooms. Artemisa was destroyed and extremely sad, but Ultridge comforted her. An investigation was immediately started. And that afternoon, the investigators told Artemisa that Nixie had put lacrimosa poisoning in the wine, killing Hermra, Rowan, and herself. Artemisa declared a day of mourning for the passing of her mother. Artemisa was extremely sad, but something amazing also happened. Next week, Artemisa discovered that she was pregnant. Nine months later, in A13, Artemisa gave birth to her first daughter, Cosmica. She had black hair and amber eyes, inherited from her father with a pair of yellow crowns on her cheeks. After they gave birth, 
Artemisa decided to stop adventuring to take care of her new daughter. Now that she had completed her adventures, she decided to update the map of Muni with her new findings. After a month, Muni had a new official map of Muni, with new kingdoms, forests, lakes, etc. In A15, Artemisa gave birth to another girl, Esteline, named in honor of Artemisa's grandmother, Estelaria. She had dark brown hair, a mix of her mother's light brown hair and her father's black hair, and violet eyes from her grandmother. In A31, Cosmic and her cousin Pixar told Artemisa they were getting married. At first, Artemisa was worried, but then realized that you can't control love, so she let them be, but Artemisa's sister thought otherwise and was extremely upset. At the wedding, Apollo completely ignored Artemisa and was extremely mad with Artemis. That night, Artemisa woke up to a severe pain in her body. She tried to move, but her whole body was numbed. Three hours later, she died. The next morning, it was found out that Apollia had injected highly venomous poison into Artemis's body while she was sleeping because of how upset she was. Apollia was sentenced to death. The incident was very similar to what Nixie had done to Queen Harmora years before. Artemisa was buried in the crypts of the castle. Her adventures would never be forgotten. Artemisa and Skog Johansson. And that was the biography of Ar Artemisa the Adventurer. Thank you once again to Infamixy for allowing us to read it. It was so great. If you'd like to see more of Infamixy's art, please go check out her DeviantArt in the description. Hope you all have enjoyed this biography, and I'll see you next time. Have a good rest of your day, everybody. Raspberry Barrel, saying goodbye.